Hello there kitties, I'm Carrie, the vacuum tube witch, with uh, a little bit of uh, old stuff that I found in my lab when I was uh, rearranging the part storage. It looks like uh, when I was moving here from wood, uh, I had my old lab in the book art museum in wood. And uh, that lab was in the typecasting room. And uh, I had some technical uh, documentation in one of the boxes. And uh, look at what I found there. Some uh, old tables uh, related to operating the monotype uh, composition casters and supercasters because um, monotype was uh, one of the dominant uh, mechanical type setting systems uh, throughout the 20th century it was there right from the beginning of the century as it was invented in uh, the late uh, 19th century and uh, it stayed uh, in operation well until 1970s, 80s uh, sometimes even 1990s and uh, now the monotype equipment and the hot metal typesetting technology is uh, mostly used by uh, fine printers and uh, enthusiasts of uh, old style books and uh, throughout uh, my work uh, at the Bookard Museum I, I also became one I, I uh, started appreciating the nice typography I also uh, appreciate uh, the great uh, engineering and design that uh, went into the monotype technology and uh, I made a project that uh, allows you to connect the old technology with the modern one like uh, I've got some uh, parts uh, for one of those controllers uh, here right uh, next to the bench one moment please let's take a closer look at it <coughs> I named this project uh, RPI to caster like uh, Raspberry Pi to a monotype composition caster and uh, while the electronics uh, was uh, pretty good right for from the get-go the control software was uh, the worst part because uh, I'm uh, pretty abysmal as a programmer I'm more of an electronics engineer and I mean a hardware engineer rather than the software or firmware one anyway uh, I've got some little stuff from the RPI to caster project uh, that uh, would let me make uh, one unit from uh, what I have now plus uh, plus some imported and, and expensive uh, solenoid valves this is the enclosure I made it by uh, CNC milling it uh, at uh, Koga studio a company that uh, cooperates and uh, finances the Book Art Museum. They've got a CNC mill and uh, that's how I uh, made all those holes here. And here we've got some uh, holes for the controls and the power connector and uh, a fuse. I might be moving them to the back side uh, in the future. And uh, here is uh, my design of the faceplate uh, for this box. 
R5 to Kessler Computer control attachment for monotype composition casters and super and uh, type and rule casters and uh, it's got two buttons and for LEDs here and uh, the parts of the Raspberry Pi and uh, this would be the back side of uh, the enclosure it's got a uh, take up spool clamp that was that was my idea if I get the chance I'll show you how it looks in practice not in this video because I've got uh, a lot of videos on monotype but uh, I still wait until I uh, edit them and uh, basically the main part of it, uh, it, it needs a pin header here and uh, a few more headers. But generally, this is um, this is my uh, second, pretty much professional design for a uh, printed circuit board. And uh, what it does, it's uh, it can control up to 32 channels that uh, are powered with 24 volts DC <coughs> and uses uh, two MCP 23017 uh, I2C port expanders and uh, it uses for ULN 2803 driver chips and uh, that's how it can control the solenoid valves that uh, are essential for coupling this uh, control unit with the machine because uh, originally the composition caster was a part of uh, a system that uh, consisted of uh, two machines a typesetting machine that looks like a mechanical keyboard and a casting machine they could be physically separated and they communicated with each other it was a simplex communication uh, parallel port that uh, was like 31 bits it's marvelous because uh, basically you had a paper ribbon a punched type that has um, 31 rows and uh, wherever a hole appeared in the ribbon I, the paper tower as was uh, called uh, passed uh, compressed air into a network of, uh, of tubes going to small pistons that uh, Roast and dropped, uh, blocking the movement of uh, certain levers, putting the matrix case in a desired position, dictated by the signals uh, found in the ribbon. And uh, those matrix cases were actually quite large. Uh, they had, uh, in the smallest and uh, earliest version, they had 15 col columns and 15 rows. Then they were enlarged to 17 columns and uh, and in uh, certain versions they could have uh, even 16 rows and uh, one of the things uh, the boards I found in my archives uh, this is a layout of a matrix case it is a 16 row 17 column uh, layout with a with a technical solution named uh, unit shift and uh, basically this table says uh, how to arrange uh, the matrices in a matrix case this is original British and this one actually shows the 327 series plus 334 series and guess what typeface it was? 
It was Times New Roman. Yeah, that Times New Roman. You know. And you sometimes love, you sometimes hate. But uh, Times New Roman was designed in the 1930s, like uh, 34, I guess. I don't remember correctly. By Stanley Morrison for um, the Times uh, newspaper in London. And then it uh, became one of the most characteristic typefaces uh, of the Monotype Corporation. The other very characteristic uh, typeface uh, that was used on all the corporate uh, visual uh, communication and uh, visual identity, like we call it now, would be Gilsons, the designed by uh, Eric Gill in 1927 and uh, pretty much based on uh, and inspired by what uh, Edward, Jones, Edward uh, Johnston uh, designed for the transport for London in, in the UK for all the train station and uh, underground and uh, that uh, kind of signage and, uh, and this is all set in Gilsons and uh, if you ask me, it's my favorite typeface of all times. That's why uh, I absolutely love to use it uh, in my designs. Like, uh, here we have uh, Gilson's Bold. And uh, this would be Univer. The monotype varigir attachment, uh, basically a continuously variable um, gear that uh, uses a belt uh, with, uh, with with two cones with where you can uh, change the distance uh, between the cones, and that would. Uh, basically change the diameter of the, the belt wheel and by changing the diameter of uh, one of the wheels in uh, a transmission you change the ratio of uh, the diameters and uh, the circumferences allowing for changing the speed of uh, the in transmission while preserving power of course some uh, friction uh, and uh, power losses are there but uh, but still and this beauty and joy forever is a diagram for the monotype uh, low quad mold and uh, it's pretty complicated. Uh, I might go over it uh, in some video, but uh, the drawing itself is, is so nice and clean. And uh, there are uh, also instructions on the back side. And, uh, and this board was not uh, very well preserved. It has seen a lot of use. It was probably also exposed to oil and, and uh, high temperatures, but still, it's, uh, it's an uh, amazing thing that uh, I found and I'm gonna put some of those uh, posters uh, on the walls in my lab, <coughs> because uh, it would be in it would be a pity if uh, they were not shown to the world. And uh, here we've got a Cicero equivalence because uh, there were a few different uh, type measuring uh, systems around uh, Europe. And the United Kingdom used uh, PICA system. The United States used a different PICA system. Europe used uh, Cicero. 
and uh, and so on and so on and uh, if you wanted to set the type on monotype you had to keep track of uh, of what you want and uh, you also uh, often uh, if you worked in, uh, in continental Europe for example had to recalculate the widths uh, for the Monotype internal units uh, based on uh, on uh, Pika that would uh, that would uh, take some thinking because uh, now you can do it all in the software, but uh, back then there were, there was just uh, there was just uh, mechanisms and there was just brainware. <laughs> And uh, one more table is the type set sizes, and uh, depending on the set number um, that determines the type uh, width, it would uh, it would uh, show the widths in uh, inches. The upper rounds uh, and uh, every column is uh, for a given size in points, and uh, every row is uh, for <coughs> a different uh, set width, and uh, all of those values uh, would show the width of a character in inches. So okay, that was uh, the first video I post on uh, the monotype composition stuff. I hope I'll post a lot of more videos on uh, on this because uh, then I know uh, quite a lot about uh, about the technology. Given that I'm pretty young, I'm turning 36. And uh, I'll be. Uh, I'll probably be the youngest person in Poland who learned the art and craft of uh, monotype corporation. Not corporation. Uh, the history of monotype corporation, uh, of course, as well. But uh, but the art and craft of uh, monotype composition. And I still feel that I uh, know just a small part of it, but uh, I would absolutely love to share whatever I can with you. So, that was the first one in the monotype series. Uh, and now it's time to say goodbye. Happy typesetting and happy casting with with no splashes. Bye.